everyone. It's good to see you all with us today on October 21st, 2018. And it feels cool out there. But don't get used to it. It's not going to last. You know how our weather is. We get cool for a couple of days, it teases us, and it goes right back up to 90 degrees again. So it's not going to last, but just take it while we got it. So be thankful for that as well. But we do welcome everyone. Good to see all with us. Let's all stand as Al comes and leads us in our call to worship and opening prayer. 243 Sweet, Sweet Spirit. Anything else that you have to 
Look, uh, Ronnie, I'm sure they'll have some information for you, but that's Tuesday. And I think it's still, the early voting is still at the parish. They still have it at the parish um, building, the big glass parish building. Is that still being done there? Does anybody know? For early voting? For, for early voting. Yes. Yeah, it's right there. The tower's building. Yeah, right off of uh, Old Spanish Trail. Yeah, I think that's where the early voting, that's where you can go. So if you would like to do that earlier than November the 6th. November 6th is uh, the election day. And on that day, there's no school, so be aware of that. Uh, the 4th of November, um, that Sunday at 2 o'clock in the morning, clocks go back one hour. So before you go to bed on November the 3rd, that Saturday night before you retire, put your clocks back one hour so you get an extra hour of sleep. So not automatically when you get up, it'll be back, and you won't have your clock set back, so you'll be either early uh, then for um, slash Sunday school or even uh, uh, worship service as well, so be aware of that. Uh, the 11th of November is our Thanksgiving banquet. I do have a list here with some people who have signed. I'll put that back in the foyer area. You can sign up for that uh, with the, um, for the Thanksgiving banquet, which will be November the 11th. Um, then um, we are collecting for Georgia Barnett. Um, You'll see offering envelopes such as this in the pews. You can get over and above the working of the church, dollar, five dollars, whatever. Uh, and this goes toward mission work being done in Louisiana. Uh, we have collected $137 that we will send to the, um, to the office as far as, and they will distribute. But 100% of that goes to the mission work being done in Louisiana uh, itself. So if you'd like to give that, you can. Uh, we have calendars, 2019 calendars for five dollars each. Um, they're in the front here, so you can take it. You can have as many as you want, five dollars each. Um, so we got a, a whole bunch of them still. So if you'd like to have purchased some, you can do so. Um, and give them away as well as gifts. Um, I think I got this right. Bayou by Hooker Bridge will be closed from October 27th until December the 7th. So it's going to be closed for uh, over a month. So be aware of that if you take by Liberty and you, and you normally go that way and you're taking that bridge uh, going over the bayou right there. Uh, so that'll be closed. I guess they're going to be doing uh, painting and repairs and different other things. I did notice they did scrape a bunch of stuff off of there, so maybe they're getting prepared. I don't know. But anyhow, and there's a sign I know on Front Street flashes and it tells you that uh, the bridge will be out for a certain time, period of time. So be aware of that from uh, the 27th uh, to December the 7th. So basically all of November as well. So <coughs> that it will be closed. Um, the Slide Out Street Fair that normally is in Old Town will be in Old Town next weekend. 27th and the 28th, so next Saturday and Sunday, they're going to have the, they have this twice a year here in St. Tammany Parish, so this is uh, next, uh, next, uh, this coming Friday, I mean, this coming Saturday and Sunday, 27th and 28th in Old Town, where they have the, the street fair, the antique fair, uh, and all that, um, so be, be aware of that going on here in St. Tammany Parish. Uh, in Slidell. In the foyer, you will see they have new, Johnny made up new directory. So please take one, you can look at it, and hopefully he said everything is right on it now. Um, so you can look at it, maybe your information, and make sure everything is right. If you see any errors on it, you know, let Johnny know or let me know, and we'll let Johnny know, and we'll just people will just have to write it down. I don't think he's going to redo it all again. But if there is some errors, we just have to write it in ourselves as far as put it in, uh, which you could have done the last time as well. You decided to go ahead and do it. So there is a new one. So go ahead and take one. Uh, they're back in the foyer. And that way you can have an up-to-date uh, directory with everybody's name and uh, phone numbers and birthdays and emails if they're, if they're there. So be, be aware of that. Uh, we are on Facebook and also on YouTube as well. 
Any other announcements? Anything else that we need to be aware of, of anything else going on? Anything else taking place? So this is basically it. Hopefully everything else. And if there is anything else, we'll let you know later on as well. Mr. Al, come and lead us in another hymn. 422, through the goodness and mercy. I'm on the last verse. We got a little extra to sing that's not in this book. I don't know why they cut the good stuff out. <laughs> but they do. They want to show it and everything. Y'all used to me now. We sing all the verses, don't we? <laughs> <laughs>
in prayer as well. Continue to remember again the many people in Florida and the rebuilding process and what they're going through in uh, Panama City, Mexico City, Mexico Beach, and St. Joe Beach, and many other places that are up and around that uh, area that were basically destroyed by Hurricane Michael. And uh, just so continue to remember them, as well as the people um, north of them in, in uh, parts of Carolina, North Carolina, South Carolina, and also in Georgia as well, as they too are trying to um, rebuild after Hurricane Florence up in those areas as well. So just remember uh, those people, uh, not only the people there, but also the many volunteers and first responders that are trying to help them to get back as well. So do remember all of them in prayer and do pray for them as well. Um, prayer of thanksgiving for Ms. Linda Hemel. She had her knee surgery done last week and it was successful. She is now in rehab or she's doing rehab on her knee. So pray for her as that now she's going through that painful uh, process of getting her knee to where to be mobile again and with a new knee cap or a new knee they put in and will work afterwards. So just remember her and pray and pray for her as well. <clears throat> Other prayer requests, concerns, thanksgiving, or whatever you would like to share with us this morning. Michael. My dad found out the other day that uh, the middle of November is getting a surgery done. They found out exactly what it is. Okay. So your, your dad, which is with Michael as well, is having surgery on his ear, right? He has an inner, <coughs> what is it? Uh, he busted a hole in his eardrum, and then it somehow got infected over the years, and yeah. it started to eat his bone tissue. Okay, so they're going to go ahead and do something about his eardrum. So remember him in prayer. In November, you said, right? Yeah. Okay. So remember him in prayer. We sure will. Okay. Others? Daniel. Uh, brother Scott. Who? Keep him in prayer. Scott. Scott. Okay, yeah, your brother Scott. Okay. Yeah, remember, remember Daniel's brother Scott. And also Daniel. You can see Daniel, I don't think he wants you to sign his cast, but he's had surgery <laughs> done on his elbow. Uh, also on his finger and his carpal tunnel. So he had basically three surgeries done all at one time. Is that right? Yeah. So we want to continue to remember you, Daniel, in prayer for your recovery and also your continual problems that you continue to have with your back and your neck as well. So pray for Daniel. Remember him in prayer. A prayer of Thanksgiving and surgeries and things all went well. Went good. So it went good. So that's good. So prayer of Thanksgiving for that. So good. Others. Yes, Daniel. Prayers for the family of Latanya, where she was praying with Bethel Gymnastics for Olivia. She was a nurse, 44 years old, and she died in her sleep. Wow, okay. And what's the last name? Edwards. Edwards, okay. So remember, remember the Edwards family with the, with the passing of her, which she will, and the many friends and people that knew her as well. Um, Renee's in the back, so I will say that remember Renee's family in Tennessee all of our family members and, uh, and all the things that she goes through as well. Uh, Ginger is home, she's doing okay, she just has a few problems, is that correct? Yeah, she was up all night. All night, really. yeah. So pray for Ginger and, and her ongoing health issues as well as Dolores and of course Al and all three of them as they continue to take care of, of Gloria as well with her Alzheimer's uh, as well. So do remember all of them in prayer what they deal with. Other prayer requests? Mr. Billy. I have a friend that's uh, going to have an uh, operation of aneurysm. Yeah. Uh, going to have to stop her heart from beating in order to fix it. Really? She's scared of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Her okay. name is Joyce Rogers. Okay. All right. Joyce Rogers. Okay. All right. Wow. Yeah, we remember her in prayer. She had it this week, or you don't know when? Well, she have not set the date yet, but okay. it's going to be soon. It's going to be soon, okay. All right, so remember her in prayer, and yeah, we certainly do. Yeah, that's, that's a very risky uh, operation, I know that, yeah. And I want to continue to remember your, your son, as well as your other family members, all dealing with cancer and other health issues as well. So I want to mention them in prayer, Ronnie and, 
and Harvey and all the rest of them as well. Remember them in prayer. Um, uh, again, just continue remember Johnny Garrett in prayer with his ongoing battle with his cancer as well and his treatments and all that he does. I know sometimes he doesn't tell us much of anything. We have to get most of our information from Debbie Garrett. You know, he, he doesn't want to burden us with what's going on, but uh, he's, he's doing okay. But I know he's in some pain from time to time. And so just remember him in prayer as well as Debbie. And then pray for Debbie's uh, family in Kentucky, a mom, a sister, and other family members as well. So do pray for them also. Uh, also Johnny's uh, stepmom, Mary Garrett, as well in, um, in Alabama, she dealing with Alzheimer's in the family as well as they help her with that. And she has uh, progressed, she has, uh, Alzheimer's is also progressing as well. So do pray for uh, that family also. As Al mentioned, just remember the different people as you look around who are not here with us this morning, uh, for whatever reason may be going on in their lives, but just pray for them and remember the many people who are not here with us this morning. Mr. Melton. Remember a friend of ours, uh, Jay is his name, has had needed to deliver transplant for a few years and he doesn't have it yet and he's starting to look real bad. Yeah, sorry, sorry to hear that. Like I said, I unfortunately, you know, the hard to get a liver transplant these days. And it's just sad because of the billions of people we have and the technology we have and everything, but it's just, it is hard to, to get something like that. So, so remember him in prayer as well as the family, we sure will. Yes. Other prayer requests. Traveling mercies for any and all who will be traveling or during the course of the week. You know, many travel back and forth to work. Pray for them. Just sitting around the city, pray for that. Pray for our government and for what takes place in our government. From the president all the way down to council people that here in Slidell, the mayors and other people too that make uh, decisions on our behalf. So pray for our government. Whether you like them or you don't like them, they're in office, pray for them. Pray for God to divinely intervene and to help with anything that may or may not go on as for because it's everything they do does affect you and I you know, one way or the other so pray for that and pray pray for them as well as they serve uh, in, in office of where they are as well again any anything else or anyone else remember each other in prayer during the course of the week pray for each other we never know what's going to take place today, tomorrow, the next day, during the course of the week. Something, it seems like always something always comes up during the course of the week and we need prayer and, and help. So ask the Lord for prayer and for help for all that's going on in your life and our lives as well. Lift each other up in prayer. Pray for the many who do not know Jesus Christ. And as always, no matter what you may be going through, give thanks to the Lord. For his goodness, for his grace and his mercy. It may, you know, even though I know we just sang the song, surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. We know that it's not always goodness and mercy. There were trials, there were tribulations, and, and, and Satan will throw everything he can at us to hinder our walk with him. Pray to the Lord, ask him for strength, guidance, and help. And thank the Lord for his grace and his mercy, and especially sending his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. By his death we are saved. And so we have an awesome God who does care. And it says, for God so loved that he gave his only begotten son with a promise. That all who believe in him shall have eternal life. And this is where eternal life comes from, through Jesus Christ and his death and his, and his blood on the cross. So thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, again we come before you. We lift up all the prayers, all the concerns, the many things that are going on in all of our lives. We lift up the many that are dealing with different health issues and health problems. Some are here, some at home, some may even be in a hospital. We lift them all up and we ask for help, for grace, and for mercy. 
We pray for healing, Lord, according to your will, that you heal and you'll be with each and every one that is dealing with different health issues and health problems. We pray for the many that are dealing with different problems that are going on at work, at home, and even the battles we daily <coughs> battle within ourselves. We try to overcome, and Lord, many times we fail. Help us, Lord. Help us to overcome the things that we battle. Help us to be stronger, and help us, Lord, to where we can walk with you daily, each and every day. We pray for traveling mercies for those who are traveling and will be traveling, whether it's just back and forth to work or in and around the area. We pray you watch over them and be with them. For those who are in places of government, supposedly representing each and every one of us, we pray for those who are in government, and we pray you'll give them guidance, help, and leadership. Where there were catastrophes or even catastrophes taking place in different areas of our world, we lift up each and every one. The many people in Florida and what they're going through in the aftermath of Hurricane Michael. The many people in the other northern states above them, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and other places that was in the aftermath of Hurricane Florence. We pray for these people. We pray for the many people on the West Coast that are going through different things because of wildfires or other things that have happened in their area, flooding that is going on. And again, many other things, not only in the U.S., but throughout the world. The many things in Indonesia and other parts of the world where they have been done by different catastrophes that have happened due to earthquakes, tsunamis, or other things that have happened, volcanoes that have erupted. We lift up the many, many people that are dealing with different things in their lives now. We pray for those who are not with us this morning for whatever reason, and we lift them up and we pray for them. We thank you for answered prayer. We thank you for being with us. We thank you for strengthening us. We thank you for all that you have done and are doing in our lives. We pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, a friend, a co-worker, a relative, or even a, a stranger we have never met, but yet we may meet for the first time and tell them about Jesus Christ. We pray for salvation for so many in need of Jesus in their hearts and their lives. And we pray today for any here in this area or listening to this that truly does not have Jesus Christ in their hearts, that today you will open their hearts and that, Father, they will come to know you today as Lord and Savior. Be with us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Let us stand as Al comes down and lead us in our offertory here. 412, my faith has found a rescue place. <laughs>
we come before you. We thank you, Lord, for your many, many blessings. We thank you for seeing to our needs. We thank you, Lord, for giving to us things needed in our life. We come now and we give you back a portion of what you have blessed us with. And we ask, Lord, that you will see to it that all that's collected is used for the furtherance of your kingdom, for the spreading of the gospel. And may you bless both the gift and the giver. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Of all the people. 
because they all seem to be similar. They all had lamps. And so today, let us look at this familiar parable and take the advice given to us by Jesus in these 13 verses of Matthew chapter 25. First of all, notice the wise virgins and the foolish virgins in verses 1 through 5 of chapter 25. At that time, the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven, will be like ten virgins who took their lamps, and they went out to meet the bridegroom. Five were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but they did not take oil with them. The wise, however, they took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Now, understand, in our time today, two, over 2,000 years have passed since the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And he said, and he told everyone, before he ascended, that he would return one day. Even the angels, when the disciples were looking up at the ascension of Jesus into heaven, and the angels even said to his disciples, why are you looking up the same Jesus that you saw who will come back again one day? And so the world has been told that one day Jesus would return. Now some believe this and some don't. We know that to be true. Now, of those who do believe this, there are some that will be ready, and there will be some that will not be ready. Now you say, well, how can this be if they believe it? I don't know, but Jesus here says the same thing. Five were wise and five were foolish. There are, we have it here. Now, and he says there are foolish and there are wise virgins concerning this. Now, understand this. Much has been said concerning the end times and the return of Jesus. I know you've heard me say it. But let me say it very clearly. According to what Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36, no one, but no one, knows when he will return. Even today, no one, but no one knows when he will return. I know there may be some preachers out there, some evangelists and some others that say, we know when he's going to return. No, we don't. We don't. Because if they did, that would contradict what the Word of God says. We don't know when he's going to be coming back again. We don't know the hour, the time, the date of, of his return. So, Jesus also made mention of his return in Luke chapter 18 and in verse 8 as he was telling the parable of a persistent widow <coughs> who went to a judge to get justice for her. And at the end of this parable, he tells his disciples a very interesting question in Luke chapter 18, verse 8, concerning his return. He says, now I tell you, he's talking about the widow who will get justice because she went to the judge, she was, she was persistent in going to him. He will see that she gets justice in quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? See, he asks the question, how many people will actually have genuine faith in him when they return. So he indicates that maybe his, his, his return is near, but we have no idea when it is. In the first century, they assumed that it would be in their time. They look forward to the coming of it. And so do we, but we have no idea as far as when it will come. But understand, when he asked this question, is it because Evil will be so, become so dominant that in many churches and many people will fall away and not have genuine faith. 
because of things. And look around and see what's happening in our world today and ask yourself the same question. Is there really genuine faith in people, especially in our churches today? Now, again, they all knew about his return. They were all confident that he was going to return because they're all, they're all there. The wise and the foolish, they're there. They're there waiting for his return. So they all knew it. But again, I'm not saying that it's going to be a half of the nation that's going to know and the other half. There's no really reason as to why he puts five and five signifying a half. I, I don't think there's any correlation to, to, with it to where you could say, okay, well, half the people or half the nation will do and the other half the nation won't. We don't know how many. How many people will have genuine faith? How many people will actually be faithful when he does return? But they're there. Now, in there, we see only half have oil for their lamps as well. Power of the Holy Spirit. In those lamps, we see, again, some have the Holy Spirit, and some do not have the Holy Spirit. Many look good on the outside, but it's not on the outside where the Lord looks. It's on the inside. It's in the heart. This is where the Lord looks and what he sees as well. Remember now, he made mention of this about the religious people of his day. Who were the religious people? The Pharisees. Jesus of the law, the Sadducees. These were the religious people. So what did Jesus say about the religious people of his day? In Matthew chapter 23, in verse 27 and following, notice he says, Woe to you teachers of the law and you Pharisees. He calls them hypocrites. Hypocrites. In other words, they did not have genuine faith. You are like whitewashed tombs. You look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. So when the Lord comes, how many genuinely faithful people will he find, as he so says in Luke chapter 18? Now, in order to be wise and not foolish, what must take place? A person must have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Sadly, many on the outside don't. I'm not saying all, many don't. But even on the inside, people in the church, we have some that don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know who, and I don't judge anyone, but you know, James tells us, you'll know them by their, it says faith without works is dead. It's dead. So what do we say? Jesus said the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and these religious leaders were dead. Because they had no work, they, they didn't show any anything of all of being having a relationship with God. They looked good on the outside. On the inside, there was nothing there. Full of dead men's bones. Now I, again, I don't know who is and who is not. Only God knows who are the wise and who are the foolish. And I'm glad He doesn't tell me or any preacher who's wise or who's foolish. You want to know what? I don't want to know. I really don't. That's up to that individual and up to that person. And to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But God knows the heart. And understand, he also said in this same chapter, when he's talking to his disciples concerning the end times, he also said, that there's going to be a separation that will take place. If you notice in Matthew chapter 25 of this chapter, and in verse 31 and following, he says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, what will happen? And the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in the heavenly glory, and all the nations, not some, 
all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right side and the goats on his left. It's going to be the separation that will take place. He will conduct it. He will do it. And how will he do it? According to their hearts. Do you know Jesus Christ in your heart, in your life? You know, it's one thing, again, you've heard me say it over and over again. It's one thing to know Jesus intellectually. But it's to know him right here. And to obey his commands. And he says, all who come to me, I will no wise cast out. And believe in him. The wise and the foolish. Both there, together, waiting for the Lord to return. Brings us to the second part. Those who were prepared and those who were not prepared. Notice what took place in verses 5 through 9 now. We see both of them are there. And both are waiting for the return of the Lord. At midnight, the cry came out. Here comes the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both you, us and you. Instead, go to those who sell all and buy for yourselves. Now, all ten had a common fault, did they not? All ten were asleep. All ten were there. Midnight came. The cry came out, the Lord was there. Now, Midnight was not a particular hour. In other words, the Lord's going to come back at, at the stroke of midnight and, every, and, and, and here he comes. It, it had not, it's just an unexpected time. He may come at 12 noon. He may come at 3 o'clock. He may come at 9 in the morning. He may come at 3 o'clock in the morning. We have no idea of what time. So those hold to and say, oh, he's going to come at midnight, so I better be ready at midnight. No, that's just a phrase here that he's putting that indicates an unexpected time that's going to happen. When we least expect it, here he comes, and he will be there. Now, those who thought they were ready when the bridegroom, Jesus, came and his return were not. Why? Because they were not truly saved. They did not have the power of the Holy Spirit upon them. They did not have the oil, as it says, in their jaws. They had nothing. And notice, they could not borrow or get oil from others. But they needed to get their own. Every person is responsible for their own salvation. For their own joy that they need in their life. Sure, we can pray for people. We can share with them the Word of God. And you know what, sadly? There are people even in churches, all denominations, Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Presbyterian, uh, you name it, Catholics, you name it. There are people in all the churches singing in these churches. And do you know, they, not, they don't even have an ounce of the Holy Spirit upon them? Nothing. Nothing inside of them. Why do they come? Because it makes them feel good. Why do they sing? Because they say, well, I'm doing my duty to God. Why do we meet? We meet to worship, to praise, and glorify our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to be here to honor, to, to bring glory and honor to Him who died on the cross for us. But there are many people in the churches does not be deceived. There are many people in the churches that need to be saved, that need to come to have a realization about Jesus Christ in their hearts and in their lives. A personal relationship with Him. And this is why our, our cities and states and our country is in the shape that it's in. We have people that are not right with God, and we see all the evil and the chaos that is going on. I'm always wondering, 
If we have as many believers and as many Christians as people say we have, why do we have so much chaos? Why are so many people doing things that they know they're not supposed to be doing if, if they say, I am a believer? What's wrong? It's because they don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay, I don't judge anybody. Nobody here, nobody any. I don't judge anybody. I have enough time just taking care of myself and doing what the Lord would have for me to do and dealing with it. But again, if we have so many millions of Christians, why are we taking a stand for what we know is right? Because we don't have that many. Let's face it. We don't have as many as people think we have. We have people that are not faithful to the words of God. And this is what we need. And again, I am not judging anybody. I'm just sorry to see the condition that our world is in due to the fact that people are not taking a stand for what is right. You remember what Jesus said in the days of Noah, they did all of those things. What's happening today too? Because it wasn't taking a stand. Noah told them what was going to happen. Noah revealed to them the things of God. And they just blew it off and they told Noah he was crazy. I think people do the same thing with us. Those of us who are truly born again. We tell them, this is what God's word says. Oh, you, it'll be alright. i got time. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Because we don't know the time. We don't know what's going to happen. But again, we see what took place and what happened here. They didn't have any oil. Nothing. Everything was gone. Not an ounce of it. Look at Judas. Judas walked with Jesus for three years. He saw the miracles. He heard his words. It even said at one point he too cast out demons and did other things. But yet, what happened at the end? went out and hung himself rather than going to the Lord and say, Lord, I have sinned. Forgive me. Help me. Be with me. Nothing concerning that. You know, I think in 1 John, in chapter 2, John, as he wrote the epistles to the people, he relates concerning this as well. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 19 and 18 and following, he talks about, he's warning too about the end times and what will happen. He says, Dear children, this is the last hour, and as you've heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us, but by their going, showing that none of them belong to us. I think we see the same thing happening today. Same thing. People come and people go. Why? Because maybe, maybe they, 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 for a while, they made them happy and pleased them, but there was no relationship in their hearts with the Lord. And so they came and then they left. There was nothing there because there was no genuine faith. They never gave their heart and their life to the Lord. That makes a difference. Being prepared comes when a person truly puts faith in Jesus Christ as his or her Savior. Repents of sin, as he says, and gives their heart and their life to him and continue on no matter what takes place, no matter what happens. Whether it's good or whether it's bad, just continue on. And so we see what takes place here with both of these as Jesus so relates. And this brings us to the last thing in verses 11 through following, or 10 and following concerning it. Those who are truly saved and those who are unsaved. Look at what happens. <clears throat> and they told the ones who were not wise, you need to go out and buy some for yourself. So, in verse 10 and following. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins that were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. <coughs> Later, the others who were unwise, who came back and said, Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he, 
The bridegroom, Jesus, replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Again, while those who did not have the oil for their lamps, they went out and supposedly bought some, they returned. And in their return, they found that the Lord had come. And at the door, in order to gain entrance, was shut. So Jesus concludes the parable with at least two warnings here. One, he did not know those who were knocking on the door to be let into the feast. The second thing he says is keep watch. Continue. Don't give up. The door was shut. Why? To secure those who were inside and also to exclude those on the outside who had never truly gave their lives to the Lord and repent of sin and were still full of sin due to the fact that they did not repent. They did not give their heart, their life, or put faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Just as it says in Revelation chapter 21 and in verse 27, it relates to us what will happen and what will take place. As it says, nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written, where? In the Lamb's book of life. Now, how do you get your name written in the Lamb's book of life? It's simple. We just sung the song. Not by faith, not by decree, not by any device. Only by believing in Jesus Christ that he died on the cross for your sins. By his blood and for his glory. It's simple. But man makes it complicated. <clears throat> All they have to do is repent and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the worst thing that can happen to you, and you know, it is not health issues, it's not financial issues, it's not even family issues. These are bad enough. But the worst thing that you can ever hear is Jesus saying, I don't know you. Who are you? You know, in another part of Luke, you know, Jesus made mention of this. He says, and they replied, Lord, we were there singing with you. We were there praying with you. We did all these things in your name. We cast out demons in your name. He says, I don't know you. Why didn't they know him? Why didn't he know them? John chapter 10. The Bible is the best commentary on itself. John chapter 10. Verse 14. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And then he goes on to say in verse 25 and following of John chapter 10. I tell you the truth. You do not believe the miracles I do. Why in my Father's name and speak to me? Why? Because you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep, listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Such an awesome God that we have. The things that we go through. We go through trials and tribulations and many other things. But again, the worst thing that you will hear, or that you may hear, if you truly do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, is when he says, and you stand before him, I don't know you. Who are you? Oh, well, Lord, I was over there by your Baptist church. I was there singing with the rest of them. I know the people. He says, I don't know you. Why? Because relationship. See, it's Christ living in your heart and your life. It's because you need to know Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. And that, like, just like when David sinned against the Lord, what did he do? 
He said, Lord, I've sinned against thee and against heaven. Forgive me. You see, when we sin, we're not just sinning against each other. We're sinning against Almighty God and His commands. And we need to always come before Him. So do not be deceived. But here, we need to understand. One day He's coming. I don't know what day He's coming. Today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, 10 years, 15 years. Maybe He's coming in my children's time. Or maybe great -grand grandchildren's time. Or your great great grandchildren's time. I don't know when He's coming. They expected him in the first century, but he never did. And you want to know what? They never gave up, those who were faithful. They continued. They were like the five wise virgins because of the power of the Holy Spirit that lived in them because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Faith without works is dead. That doesn't mean you're saved by your works. That just means that people will know who you are, or what you do and how you do things. Do we always do things perfectly? Of course not. All of sin have fallen short. But that's the grace of God. Does it give us a license to continue doing wrong? No. It should never be. We should be the example. It tells us in, in Matthew as well, in the Beatitudes, we are the light of the world. The light. We are to be an example what the Lord wants us to do. Not that we're always doing it. We all fall short. And that's the grace of God. One day he's coming back. But well, which of these virgins will you be? Will you be the foolish? Or will you be the wise? You know, Jesus made another point in his Sermon on the Mount. A wise man builds his house upon the rock. A foolish man builds his house on the sand. That rock is Jesus Christ. The choice is yours. How do you want to build your life? You know, one day, every one of us will stand before the Lord and give an account of all that we've done. One day, the Lord will look and say, Well done, good and faithful servant. How will you be answered by the Lord? What will he say to you when you stand before him? I pray that the day never comes in your life where you will hear him say, I don't know you. But today you can hear him say, come, welcome into my home which I have prepared for you. Just as he told the disciples, I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. And one day, we will be with him. But that takes a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He tells him, repent and put faith in Jesus Christ. You can do that today. And be assured of your salvation. Because of what Christ has done at Calvary. Let us be. Almighty God, as we come again before you, Lord. We thank you for your words. We thank you for what you have revealed to us. If there is anyone here this morning to whom you have spoken to and you have said to them, do not delay, don't be foolish, come unto me, just as you are. I pray today they will come. I pray today that they will walk with you on a daily basis and know you as Lord and Savior of their life, of their life and their heart. In the name, in your name, Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Amen. Turn to hymn number 300. Make the song without any explanation whatsoever. Without him, I could do nothing. It's with him, and not without him. Hymn number 300. God has spoken to you today. You come as we sing. <laughs> Yeah.
watch. And also tell others to keep watch as well. One day it will appear on a glorious day that will be. We invite you to come back Wednesday night, 7 o'clock for our Wednesday night Bible study. 6.15, 6.30, somewhere around there we have uh, dinner, which we'll have this Wednesday. So you come and have dinner and fellowship with us and supper and Bible study at 7 o'clock after we eat. Come and join us Wednesday night. If not, we invite you to come to Sunday school, 9 o'clock, 9.15, 9.20. <laughs> But come early. We have coffee and donuts and fellowship. And at the beginning, I think a lot of people miss out on the fellowship in the, in the morning as well when we have it. So come, come early in the morning and have fellowship with us for Sunday school. Come and have Sunday school and then worship service at 1030 as well as we gather together to worship the Lord. Again, I'll put this in the back, in the back of the foyer for our Thanksgiving banquet, which will be on the November the 11th. You can sign up for that. Also, remember there are uh, new to new directory back in the foyer area. Take one, please, and you can update it in yours if you want to use this, or if you just want to use your one you had from the last time and scratch it out and just put whatever you want to put on there. That's fine for the update uh, things that's on here as well. So that's in the back. Uh, go ahead and do that as well. Uh, again, we have calendars. For anyone who would like to purchase calendars, you can purchase more than one. They're just five dollars each. They're there in the front, uh, the front pew as well. So you can do that also. May God bless. Have a good day, a good week. Walk with the Lord daily, each and every day of your life. Al, lead us in a closing prayer, please. Heavenly Father, again, we come before you, thanking you for all that you've done for us, and praying, Father, that each and every one here today does know you as Lord and Savior, and by doing so, by knowing you, Lord, that they are, we are, prepared for your coming. A lot of people, Father, think about tomorrow. But a lot of people don't make it till tomorrow. And I pray for each and every one. Lord, be with us as we leave this time together. Bless us. Watch over us. Bring us back to worship again together. In my son's precious name. I pray that if God has spoken to you today, whether here or you looking at this on Facebook or YouTube. And if you need further counseling or if you would like to talk to someone and you live locally here, you can call at, at the church at 985-214-9343. And feel free to call but if you're out of town or if you don't live near here, seek your local pastor or minister and talk to them further about your own eternal life. We only have today. So if you would like to seek or to talk to someone, feel free, call us and let us know if we can help you in your eternal life, your salvation, your relationship with the Lord as well.